Hi all, happy Thursday. Um, today we're going to be reading the chapter two for our Dogs in the Dead of Night. This is our new book that we're going through. And um, Annie and Jack just got transported to the Swiss Alps. So chapter two is called Buried Alive and it has this really cool picture. So I'll show it to you. A cold wind swept through the window. The purple light of the setting sun filled the treehouse. Jack and Annie wore scratchy wool pants, shirts, hats, scarves, and gloves, and leather shoes. Jack's pack had turned into a leather bag. When he opened it, he saw the scroll and the blue bottle inside, along with his notebook and pencil and the emerald rose. So these are the Swiss Alps, said Annie, shivering, looking out the window. Pretty but cold. Jack looked out with her. The treehouse was nestled between gray boulders on a mountain slope. Snowy peaks loomed overhead. Below the peaks peaks was the snow-covered pass they had seen in the picture. Smoke rose from a tall building. This must be the great St. Bernard Pass, said Jack. He picked up their book and turned to the page with a bookmark and read. The great St. Bernard Pass is an ancient road between the two highest peaks of the Alps. For thousands of years, it was the only route between Switzerland and Italy. The pass was named for Bernard of Menthon, who built a monastery there in the 11th century. For hundreds of years, the monks at this Swiss monastery have welcomed cold and weary travelers who are crossing the pass. So that building must be the monastery, said Jack. Great, said Annie. We can start our mission by going there. Okay, said Jack, but I don't get it. To save Penny, we have to find a white and yellow flower, and we have to live its meaning, if only for an hour. Whatever that means. We'll figure it out, said Annie. Let's hope, said Jack, but where do we find flowers here? Jack and Annie looked out at the treeless landscape of ice, snow, and rock. Well, there must be flowers somewhere, said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. Maybe Teddy and Kathleen made a mistake and sent us to the wrong place. They've never made a mistake before, said Annie. Uh, excuse me, Teddy didn't make a mistake turning Penny, the penguin, into snow, said Jack. Okay, good point, said Annie. But let's head to the monastery before it gets dark. We can ask about flowers there. But what if, started Jack. Stop worrying, interrupted Annie. Our books is the monks welcome cold, weary travelers. I'm cold, and your questions are making me weary. Come on. She climbed out the window into the snow. Funny, said Jack, but he was all but he was ready to find shelter too. His face was freezing. He packed up their book and slung the leather bag over his shoulder, then followed Annie out of the treehouse window. Jack's feet crunched down on the icy snow. As the sun went down behind the peaks, deep purple shadows climbed over the tall mountains. The monastery in the hollow below was completely hidden in darkness. We have to hurry, said Annie. No, we have to move slowly down the slope so we don't slide, said Jack. Well, then let's move slowly, quickly, said Annie. Jack and Annie started down the slope. As they carefully put one foot in front of the other, a strange sound came from above. Oomph! What was that? said Jack, looking around. Next came a low rumble like thunder. What's that? said Annie. Then came a noise like the sound of glass breaking. Whoa, said Jack. Directly above them on the mountain, big blocks of snow were breaking into smaller chunks and sliding down the slope. Grab my hand, shouted Jack. He reached for Annie, and she gripped his hand. Suddenly the snow was moving all around them. Even the snow beneath them was sliding. A block of icy snow slammed into Jack, knocking him away from Annie. Jack, Annie cried. Another chunk of snow knocked Jack off his feet and sent him tumbling head first down the slope. Jack kept falling downhill until a wall of frozen snow stopped him. He tried to stand, but a giant wave of soft, powdery snow blew over him, burying him completely. Jack kicked his arms and legs, trying to surface from the fluffy sea of snow. He kicked and flailed, but the harder he seemed to struggle, the more snow there seemed to be. Oh oh my gosh. (laughs) Uh, Snow clogged Jack's eyes, ears, and throat. Every time he coughed, he sucked in more snow. He felt as if he were drowning until he finally pushed his head up through the snow into the cold air. He could breathe, but Jack still couldn't see. 
A gust of snow powder blinded him. He couldn't move his arms or hands, his feet or legs. The soft snow around his body had turned hard and solid. Jack felt as if he were trapped in cold concrete, buried up to his neck. Where was Annie? Had she been buried alive too? Jack tried to yell, but no sound came from his throat. He kept trying to shout for Annie, but it was hopeless. His lips wouldn't move. He couldn't even feel his mouth. He couldn't feel his arms or legs, feet or hands. He closed his eyes. He couldn't feel anything, not even the wind that kept blowing snow on his face. Ow! screamed Jack in his head. His eyes were shot open. He was freezing cold, and the creatures were attacking him. They were whimpering, shuffling, panting, and whining. Wild dogs, Jack thought in terror. Two dogs were scratching and digging all around Jack's body. A third dog licked his eyes and ears and the top of his head. Jack felt as if he were about to be licked to death. Help, Jack tried to shout, but no sound came from his clogged throat. Help, help! His mind roared, but the three huge, panting creatures kept licking him and pawing the icy snow that had trapped Jack's body. As the giant dogs hovered over him, Jack saw the flames behind him. Figures in hooded robes were moving about in the fiery light, carrying torches. The figures were scarier than the dogs. Jack! came a faint cry. Annie? Jack croaked. A man shouted and the dogs backed off. The flaming torches shone directly on Jack. He could see that he had been mostly dug out of snow, but he still couldn't feel or move his body. Two of the hooded figures leaned down and tightly gripped Jack's arm. They pulled him to his feet. When they let go of him, he started to fall. They grabbed him again and lifted him onto a cloth stretcher. My, my sister, Jack chattered. He managed to lift his head and look back. In the torchlight, he saw Annie lying on a stretcher, wrapped in a blanket. She is safe, said one of the men. Who, who are you? Jack asked, shivering uncontrollably. He had lost his hat and scarf in the snow. We are monks from the St. Bernard Monastery, the man answered. He covered Jack with a heavy blanket. Oh, thank you, whispered Jack. The three dogs led the way over the snowy pass, snorting and sneezing and panting. The monks followed, carrying Jack and Annie through the cold, windy dark. And that is the end of chapter two of our book. And so I will post tomorrow with chapter three. I hope you have a wonderful day.